The Starship IFT-2 flight concluded almost two months ago, yet it left behind numerous intriguing aspects. Notably, the fuel sloshing issue. I'm convinced that not just myself, but many others share a curiosity about this fascinating occurrence. Hence, in today's episode of Great SpaceX, let's delve into the mechanics behind the fuel sloshing, its origins, and the impact it had on that particular flight. Having set the stage to explore the intriguing fuel sloshing issue from the Starship IFT-2 flight, our attention now shifts to another pivotal aspect, the booster's engine behavior during this critical juncture. What was happening with the booster at that time? Why didn't the engine start or stop working? The issue is attributed to the upper stages thrust and the fuel inside the booster potentially causing damage to the engine's fuel supply line. Halting the fuel flow and resulting in the aforementioned problem. To grasp this better, let's utilize visualization images generated by computational fluid dynamics technology. A big thanks to the space engineer team for their tremendous efforts in creating these images using this technology. Their work allows everyone to visualize the impact of fuel sloshing more easily. Returning to the issue just before the engine cut off at T plus 2 minutes 39 seconds, there was very little remaining fuel in both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks, only about 10%. Consequently, despite the significant empty space in the tanks, the acceleration kept the fuel pulled at the tank's bottom. Up until the point the booster engines cut off, they were generating thrust to propel the booster forward. However, at T plus 2 minutes 39 seconds, the outer and middle engines ceased operation, leaving only the three inner gimbal engines active. Then, by T plus 2 minutes 44 seconds, the engines in the second stage initiated, exerting force at the top of the booster. This action led to a reduction in the booster's thrust. While the three Raptor engines engines continued to push the booster, their thrust countered the direction of the exhaust thrust created by the six engines in the second stage. As a consequence, the booster's thrust momentarily opposed the initial flight direction, causing a brief slowdown. During this interval, the fuel affected by inertia splashed in the direction of the initial flight, similar to how our bodies lurch forward in a car when it suddenly decelerates. The remaining fuel splashed freely into the empty space due to this motion. Subsequently, around T plus 2 minutes 50 seconds, the other Raptor gimbal engines were activated, gradually restoring power and thrust to the booster, initiating its acceleration once again. However, at this point, the booster's thrust countered the movement of the weightless fuel that had just previously splashed. Let's not overlook the fact that both the fuel tank and the fuel inlet were previously under immense pressure from tons of fuel. The continuous generation of opposing forces resulted in severe sloshing of the fuel against the fuel supply lines. Furthermore, the intense vibrations caused the fuel to create numerous gas bubbles. This significantly impacted crucial components such as fuel supply lines, turbines, fuel inlets, and pre-combustion elements. These forces were potent enough to cause damage to the engine's systems, particularly the vulnerable structures like the pipes. The impact of the second stage's exhaust, coupled with the sudden force movement of the fuel potentially led to the creation of fuel air bubbles that might have entered the engine's fuel supply line, consequently causing damage to the engine itself. Subsequently, this damage propagated to other components, eventually resulting in the successive shutdown of the engines about half a minute later. This disruption thwarted the planned landing process, compelling SpaceX to activate the self-destruct sequence to terminate the booster's journey around T plus 3 minutes 20 seconds. In summary, this issue stemmed from the intense vibrations and the forceful collisions within the fuel tank, ultimately leading to the engine failure. It's disheartening if these factors do indeed prematurely end the booster's mission. There might have been higher expectations
options for Super Heavy, especially given the flawless proceedings leading up to the separation process. These advancements had enabled Starship to overcome two significant issues encountered during the initial integrated test flight, which had concluded in less than four minutes. Certainly, there are numerous aspects of this flight that haven't been revealed yet, notably the stages landing, a crucial part of SpaceX's ongoing efforts aimed at achieving complete reusability for Starship in the future. In considering this trajectory towards reusability, one may wonder about the essential upgrades SpaceX will need to implement to materialize this vision. SpaceX is likely to focus on reinforcing vulnerable parts within the fuel tank, particularly the fuel supply line, to withstand the rigorous pressures and impacts experienced during flight and separation. Addressing the effects of the second stage's engine exhaust on the booster during separation will be pivotal, requiring detailed analysis and potential adjustments to the separation process. Additionally, a meticulous review of sensitive components like tank domes will be essential to prevent leaks and failures, common issues in various rocket systems. These improvements will be implemented not only in the current prototypes participating in subsequent flights, including Super Heavy and Starship, but also in the upcoming version Starship version 2. Musk has hinted that this iteration will expand the fuel tank, reduce weight, and enhance reliability. Alongside expansion, SpaceX is likely to fortify the tank and fuel lines for improved reliability. Although Super Heavy hasn't been explicitly mentioned, SpaceX might undertake similar enhancements with particular emphasis on the booster due to its heightened exposure during the separation process. These measures aim to ensure the next flight proceeds seamlessly and surmounts the unforeseen challenges encountered previously. Indeed, alongside hardware improvements, SpaceX continues to upgrade its engines. In the seven months between the two flights, notable upgrades were made, including the replacement of the hydraulic power unit system, ignition enhancements, and reinforcing vulnerable components such as injectors, pipes, and manifolds. However, these improvements will likely need further enhancements, especially for engines slated for upcoming flights. Presently, SpaceX is actively engaged in developing new generations of engines. In May of 2023, they conducted tests on Raptor 3, achieving impressive parameters. Apart from powerful thrust, Raptor 3 boasts simpler designs, thereby augmenting its reliability. Moreover, after the IFT-2 flight, Musk hinted at an unknown new engine version. According to Musk's tweet, several elements, notably the removal of heat shields, will be improved. This upgrade implies that previously sensitive engine systems like injectors, pipes, and wiring have been sufficiently reinforced to not require protective shields. This advancement aims to counteract in-flight impacts, including those from fuel sloshing. Anticipation builds for the release of this version, and we eagerly await more detailed updates from SpaceX and Elon Musk. We're all on the trajectory towards the Starship IFT-3 flight. SpaceX has been ramping up preparations vigorously in the final days of last year and early this year through crucial tests. However, the true test of the effectiveness of these improvements will be during the flight itself. Hopefully, SpaceX has adequately identified and addressed the issue, implementing upgrades to mitigate impacts like fuel sloshing, thereby ensuring that the next flights are entirely successful. What are your thoughts on the fuel sloshing issue highlighted today? Are there any other intriguing details that you're aware of? Please share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.